Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Anime on Draft, episode 25. Um, this is your host, Alec, uh, joined here today in uh, all one place again for the third time ever. Uh, joined here with uh, Drew. I heard you guys were talking mad shit about me with Mark last week. <clears throat> that was Mark. Just blame Mark. <laughs> just blame Mark? <laughs> yeah, just right. blame Mark. And uh, Rolando. Yo, yo. Sup? So today... We will not be drinking a beer. Um, we have one that we were going to drink, and then we got a growler of it, and it is currently in Rolando's fridge, which is not where we are right now. <laughs> so, no beer this week, and uh, we also had quite a lot of beer yesterday, Yep. so beer does not sound good to any of us not right <laughs> today. No. Um <clears throat> But we will talk about, we went to Ballast Point in uh, Mira Mesa yesterday for lunch. And so we each got a different beer so we could quickly talk about each one, each beer that we got um, and kind of what we thought about it. So let me throw it over to Drew. You can start with your beer. Go ahead. So we've talked about the Sculpin uh, on this show before and the several different ideations or ideations of them. Um, the one, the flavor that I got this time that I've been wanting to try for a while is the uh, Habanero Sculpin. So a little bit of a spicy kick to this guy. Uh, it was it was good. Uh, the color was was actually really nice. It was kind of more red than your typical IPA, uh, in particular the Sculpin. It had this nice like reddish hue to it, and uh, I think we all of you guys had a sip of mine and just like kind of kicks you in the back of the throat right mm -hmm. away. Um, habaneros are are very fruity um, as well as being very hot, um, so you kind of get that floral. Um, the floral flavors of the um, Sculpin, the regular, are kind of brought out with that. And then, bam, right in the back of the throat, that uh, heat will kind of creep up on you. I don't think any of us were expecting it to be that spicy. Um, and so, like, the first time I think we all took a sip of it, like, we all coughed a little bit because it was like, oh, all right, this is how this is going to be. But it was it was excellent. Um, I'm a big fan of spicy food. Um we kind of compared it a little bit to that other spicy beer we had, the uh, Sriracha Rogue. Um, and I thought this one was way better. Um, I don't know I agree. what you guys think about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, definitely um, a better flavor profile. It went well with food. Um, I think I had <clears throat> fries and a lobster roll and some calamari. And it was uh, it went pretty well with that. Um, it was it was good. So. Um, I don't. Are we gonna rate them all? Our individual rating? Or yeah, let's yeah, give, it give, a, give it give it yours. Um, hmm. I'll, I'm gonna rate it pretty high. Uh, this is something that I would like to see them bottle because I would buy this um, a lot because it's like again, it's like super addictive because it's spicy. It goes well with food, um, and it's just a great IPA flavor. We all know about the Sculpin, so I'm gonna give it like a four point five um, out of five. I really enjoyed that. It was delicious. Wow. Very good. <clears throat> yeah, it was a really good beer. I know I just had one sip, and it was it does give you that kick, but it tastes better than the Rogue, and it's just they did a really good job of blending the flavors and stuff. So, uh, Rolando, uh, go ahead. What was your beer, and how'd you like it? Um, I had the orange and vanilla fathom. It's like a, it was, I, how do they call it? It was like a golden IPA or something, or was something it like a lager IPA? It was like some weird, weird IPA variation. Um, <clears throat> it was, it was decent. Um, is it like, I know drew, you mentioned it yesterday, but it was very orangey mm -hmm. and it was weird. Like I didn't really get too much vanilla. I got a lot of orange. And it was just kind of, you know, sweet. Um, I think if you drank a lot of it, you would just get a headache and, yeah. it, and it wouldn't be good. It it's it was easy to drink. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. The, mm -hmm. I guess the benefit of it. But uh, I don't know. I I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. So it's 
it's one that like I could recommend maybe drinking a glass of, but not like having like it as your session beer. It's definitely like too sweet, too much orange. Um, it's not super bitter. And that's probably what makes it more drinkable. But at the same time, the orange sticks out way too much because of that. I think it would have been better as like a cream ale or yeah. something like that. Cause you would have got more vanilla. The orange would have been mellowed out. Um, I just don't think like you have oranges in IPAs and things like that, but this was just like essence of orange on top of <laughs> like orange peel that an IPA usually gets. And it was just, it was a lot like it, it didn't even taste like, normal orange it tasted kind of like the fake orange yeah, exactly, flavoring exactly. which is kind of what made it a little bit off-putting i think that's partially the vanilla that was like mm. making it seem like kind of super medicinal or something artificial. Yeah. yeah yeah um i'm gonna give it like a three and a half it it's not bad but it's not great yeah yeah i think that's fair i know when i took the sip i was like if i had a whole glass of this i'm gonna have a headache and five minutes like yeah but um so cool um i had the tongue buckler i think it was yeah. called yeah and it was they called it a imperial red um it's 10 percent. i remember that uh very nice color um it smelled really good that's what i remember the smell of it yeah. smelled like a red but it was like better i don't know it just smelled really good um all in all, though, it's like your traditional imperial red. Tastes good. Um, so it had that nice brick color too. Yeah, it had that like red brick color. Um, the head on it stayed a little bit, but I don't remember it lasting for very long. Not to the point where I was like detracted or it was detracting from it. Like oh, the head disappeared in ten seconds. It like mm-hmm. felt natural. Um, all in all, I thought it was a really good beer. I would definitely recommend it and drink it again. It's not a session beer at 10%. No, 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 um, no, no, no. That's like a one or two-er, and then you're good for a while. Um, so I would probably give that, I think like a 4.25 is pretty, uh, <laughs> like, fine. Yeah, it was a good one. Yeah. Um, I'd get that again. I would definitely get the jalapeno and the... Habanero. And the, or habanero and the... Uh, I mean, a jalapeno IPA. Though. Yeah, I want to. I want to try that. That would be pretty good. <laughs> Let's make our own, dude. I That's just, what we these, need to do. These spicy beers, like I'm, I'm about it. I, th- I, I, they're just good. Like when you think, for me, when I think of like drinking, like in the day, and like having a session beer, and like maybe having some chips and salsa, and you just throw your chips and salsa into the beer or that spice <laughs> into the beer, and it's like all in one place. It's delicious. Yeah, you just drink. I'm the about salsa. it. I'm about it. <laughs> um. Yeah. No, I definitely would get. That one and the red again. I probably will never get the uh, orange vanilla fathom yeah. again. This is a little um, much. But um, cool, cool. So let's, you know, move on to our uh, weekly pairing. We Anu- had anime. Anime, yes. Um, we have one <laughs> finale this week, and it's uh, Soccer Request. The other three, Gamer's New Game and Classroom of the Elite, the finales are next week. Correct. Okay. Um, so why don't we go ahead and start with Gamer's. Because and we'll finish with soccer request. We'll have the finale as the finale. Oh, <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and uh, talk about gamers. Um, I know I liked the episode, but I also got a little annoyed by it. Um, what did you guys think? I know Rolando mentioned he was a little irked by it. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I I was watching it. And like we talked about last week, how I want them to make me, um, you know, kind of root for Karen and like make me like her character more. And they were kind of trying to set it up for that. But <clears throat> Konoha just like shows up <laughs> and it starts cock blocking Karen so much throughout the whole episode. And I felt so bad for her. Mm-hmm. And I was just getting irritated because it was just like, why are you doing this? Like there, like there's also like, the weird like Morse code blinking between like Karen and Uehara that was just like starting to get on my nerves too. 
because, you know, it's just like, why are you spending more time focusing on telling each other that, yeah, this is great. We're doing the right thing <laughs> instead of actually like trying to do the right, do thing. <laughs> like the right thing with your significant other. Well, and even, even along those lines to Uihara, like pre in previous episodes says I'm rooting for Chiaki. And then now he's putting all this effort into helping Karen, helping Karen. And he even says it at one point, like, wait, I'm like, wasn't I supposed to be like going for Chiaki? Yeah. <laughs> and so it's just like the disconnect there. Um, but I definitely agree with you that uh, I don't know. It's just, sh she was just too much. Konoha. She was too, too much. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, what? Like, it was vicious. <laughs> it was I wonder vicious. if there was like, cause they had that whole section where she was like the rival Karen's rival mm -hmm. or whatever. I wonder if they had, if they had like put more into that story, if this wouldn't have felt so like just vicious and unnatural. That's probably um, right. Cause like I'm wondering it is if more in the manga, probably something in the light novel that we aren't seeing at all. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Cause like it was just, I was like, Holy Man. shit. Like, and I felt <laughs> so bad for Karen. Yeah. And then because like, Konoha's doing this to Karen. It was making fucking Chiaki feel terrible. Yeah. Too, yeah. Because you could see it like, I mm -hmm. mean, and then she passed out. There's that. But like she ended up getting like sort of rejected, but not. Mm -hmm. And then like having to see Karen just be like shit on. I'm just like, <laughs> this is only good for Konoha. Like this is not helping anybody. Well, at least uh, Chiaki by the end of the episodes kind of, kind of comes to terms with her feelings and she's like at least accepted that she's going to have to try hard in order to, you know, win um, win favor over uh, Karen. So it's it's nice that she's at least accepted it. Now will she admit that she is Mono or uh, Nabe or whatever? Will she admit that to, um, you know, to them? But Probably not. I mean, I don't know. It's, we got one Maybe episode someday. to kind of wrap it up, but you know, we'll kind of, I guess, see see where that goes. But I was, I'm, I was uh, kind of shocked to hear that you guys, because I know you guys are big uh, Chiaki fans. Um, I'm more of the Karen fan here. Uh, I was interested to hear your opinions um, about her getting kind of dicked on this Just episode <laughs> but i think the way that they did it it's like you can't help but feel bad for no. karen because it's like there's nothing wrong with her she's a sweet girl and you know maybe she doesn't have as many endearing qualities but to see her just get fucking dumpstered on <laughs> like that is just it hurt it yeah. hurt my heart because we all know i'm rooting for her but it's just uh it was a lot it was it was ruthless it was, vicious. It was ruthless but <laughs> yeah like poor karen i was just like oh fucking stop up. like be be kind to her like you're you're killing and her let me clarify i'm not rooting for anybody in particular right but i did feel like chiaki had better development throughout the season mm -hmm. yeah and i expected to get the karen development and in didn't. these episodes and we didn't and that's probably why i'm also a little pissed off yeah because i'm like okay now sell me on this character mm -hmm. and all that happens is she just gets cock blocked. Yeah. Well, oh, and then and then when she does finally like he offers um, her his hand, um, and you know they go off and they're watching the fireworks or whatever. She does that same stupid thing where like, oh yeah, I command that you do this, and you know let's go. Oh, I uh, guess I can hold her hand so I don't get lost. Oh yeah, that was that like, was triggering. It's like uh, it's like come on, just, just take the hand and you, walk. You're away. blushing furiously. Yeah. <laughs> like you wanted this the whole time, and you thought you were gonna have to. To initiate it and because he initiated it you have to go along in this stupid like oh yes i'm the leader <clears throat> commander bullshit and man. because she keeps doing that like he has the wrong impression well, of he, her liking him exactly and he said like i wish i knew what she felt like sometimes and i thought it was gonna <laughs> the misunderstandings were gonna go, kind of go away when she says you know i like you over the phone um and then it's like pretty obvious it's like you know oh she does actually like me maybe i should you know well, follow plus, up on that or something the whole stupid idea of going on a double date it's like <laughs> that just makes it seem like you're you have ulterior motives you know because it's just like oh like yeah let's go on a double date with the person the people that we think you guys like you like i think you like and that you think i like yeah that's <laughs> a great idea
that's not going to cause any more misunderstandings. Yeah, there. I mean, it, like I got the the situation seemed kind of stupid, but it makes sense when you think about high school kids and being all insecure about everything, and they're like rooting for one person, and then next thing you know, they're like, "Oh, I think they're cheating on me. Let's come up with this plan." And then they're just their motivations never actually sync up with anything <laughs> they say. And so at least I thought that the whole like situation with Urahara and Karen, even though it was kind of odd, made a lot of sense given like. Where, what kind of stage of life they're supposed to be in. So I thought that it did a good job on that, but it was triggering still. <laughs> but I think that was the intention. Yeah, I mean, when she shows up at the amusement park, I'm just like, oh my fucking God. Like, <laughs> just let it go. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, hopefully this last episode, we get some more, maybe it would be cool to get some last minute Karen shit, but I don't think it'll happen and it would feel unnatural. But we'll see. I think they need to, Give Karen development next episode. If it, they don't, then well, it's just a like there either is going to be another season or they just failed. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I would watch <laughs> another season. I yeah, think I would sure. like. It, but um, I, this show is like really entertaining for mm-hmm. me. Um, if they got more budget, I think I talked about that before. If they got like a little bit of better budget for their animation and stuff like that. Like the story is like good, and it's like keeps me coming back for more. They they do do some frustrating things, but at the end of the day, it's to me it's it's very entertaining. It's mm-hmm. one of my favorite shows this season for sure. Yeah, it was definitely a fun one to watch. But um, so let's move on. Um, let's go ahead and talk about a uh, new game. Drew's favorite. Um, oh. Don't bully Nanechi. Don't bully her. <laughs> she's fucking precious. Just bullied her. She's getting bullied. Oh, she's getting bullied. Um, <laughs> so uh, I just watched this one. Um, actually, I liked this episode. Um, I thought it was a good one. Um, it, it was uh, kind of funny to watch her get a little bullied. <laughs> um, and then they kind of like come to terms with each other and they're like friendly with each other again after they figure out that they're all working hard and not just, I don't know, one's not just talented and the other one's not just on a whim or whatever. Um, so they kind of, they, uh, the other one's not just amends. <laughs> brought in because the person likes her. Yeah, because yeah. she's like, oh, hey, I like you. Come program with yeah. us because that works out well. Um, but yeah, all in all, I liked it. This isn't the last episode, right? No, there's no. one more. Um, so, I mean, Drew, you love Nanechi. What do mm-hmm. you think of this episode here? I mean, yeah, it, it's good. Um, we have the good uh, character development between those two. Um, and mm-hmm. we kind of, you know, see a little bit of the background, which was good. What I wanted to ask you guys and Rolando in particular, since you've read it, I don't know if you're caught up to how far they are in the anime or whatever. But um, we kind of they were introducing kind of um, Momo as this character who's going to like rival um, Alba. And in the last few episodes, we haven't really seen anything with her. And that's how I thought it was going to go. Instead, we're getting, you know, character development for other characters. But like Momo and Alba's like interaction or like just it's like it's flatlined. You know, Momo was like, you know, oh, I'm out to get her. I'm out to be the character designer, you know, blah, blah, blah. And now they like somewhat get along. Um, and Momo's just like flat and boring. Is that kind of how it is for them all the time? Or is there going to be more developments or? Um, I, I haven't caught up yet Mm -hmm. reading because we got to the point where like the anime like surpassed it. And I just Mm -hmm. kind of, you know, decided to just watch the show instead. And then I'll probably read, I'll probably read those like 10 chapters or so after the next episode. But, um, yeah, I kind of agree that it just kind of flatlined, but I feel like the main reason why that happened was because they're putting so much emphasis on what's going on between Nene and, uh, and Naru. Mm -hmm. And then there's the whole, um, stuff that they just threw in with Ko now. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, I don't know. Um, it's like Alba's on the back burner. Yeah. Like Mm -hmm. Alba is on the back burner. She Mm -hmm. got her development earlier in the season so mm-hmm. they're kind of putting that on the back but and at the, the same time now momo is like why did you throw this character in <laughs> yeah 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 so i mean the the whole co thing saw that come in but um i like the <laughs> the commentary while we were watching well i threw it up on my tv here and watched it it was like oh now i can't wear my fossil watch anymore <laughs> <laughs> poor poor rin <laughs> She's just holding her fossil watch like, oh, I don't, what do I do? Uh, I have to take this off. She's like the obsessive 
girlfriend. Yeah. 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 So, oh, you're, you're changing things in your life. No, <laughs> you haven't told me. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> the, there was one thing that I didn't really like with this mm. episode. Like in general, I thought it was a good episode, but I don't like how they resolve the whole Naru Nene situation mm-hmm. because I felt like it's like, Oh God, they're going to do this stupid sob story about, about Naru. It's like, Oh, her parents didn't support her dream of becoming a programmer. It's like, okay. And then all of a sudden, Nene is like, okay with it. She's like <laughs> getting literally shit on. And, and she even calls herself like, I'm pretty stupid. Uh, and once I learned about, you know, your background, I want to support you now. It's like, what? It's like, what? Like you, she was literally <laughs> shitting on you. Yeah. Like and, savage. And then she fucked up hard. Like and, so hard. And like, now <laughs> you're like helping her. It's like, I guess that sh- like shows like she's the, the bigger woman in this situation. But yeah, because she's it, pure. It's like. I I don't like how it was like also a so it's like the initial shift in Naru's character from being really nice to being like a bitch and then going like oh wow you're being nice to me even though I was a bitch to you and then she's nice again it's like it's just inconsistent Mm -hmm. I mean I think part of it is that's just Nene's character as well like being nice because it never seemed like she hated the other girl she was just like I don't get her well and she wanted to kind of make it work between them Mm -hmm. because she is just nice to everybody and you know she's kind of goofy and she messes up but you know she she wants everybody to kind of get along um and i guess we did kind of get it in the end you know that everybody is friends again and Mm -hmm. we're getting along Mm -hmm. so that's good i guess she's kind of one of those characters where it's like in a group of people she's like the glue yeah, sort of yeah. like she didn't bring everyone together, but they all hang out because she's always around and nice yeah. to everyone. She's like that character when she has like no special talents for the most part. <laughs> she's just nope. She's just kind of dumb. <laughs> um, but everybody likes, you know, hanging out with her because she she's always positive, has that positive vibe mm-hmm. about her. So. <laughs> and yeah, she, and they don't want to see her get bullied. Yeah, nope, don't, don't don't bully, bully <laughs> Ninetti. She is fucking pure. Best grill. But uh, yeah, uh, sorry, I was trying to check the timer and I completely forgot what I was going to say. But I think that's it for that episode. Um, yeah. We don't really have much more going on. Next episode's the finale, so we'll probably we'll get more about Co, yeah. Co and the Fossil Watch. Where, where's she going? <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it seems like she's going to like her dream company or something because she was like, she said something like, it's just a lucky that I know somebody who has a connection to mm-hmm. that company. So yeah. who knows where she'll end up, who but knows? we'll find out next time. It'll end I up, hope it'll end up being good for everybody. That's like, what's going to happen. I hope it's not oh, like yeah. some sort of troll thing they're <laughs> playing where they're like, Oh, I'm so glad someone had a connection to that company. And it's like, actually like, Oh, like some sort of, restaurant or some shit like yeah. that <laughs> or he's or, like getting like rent a promotion or something it, i'm just like thinking it's like oh this is like the you know the after party for the game like that <laughs> like she was planning it she's like right. i i'm i like christina's like i don't want you i don't feel um like safe having you like leave the company as in like leave the building or like some <laughs> shit like that like i don't yeah. know about having you leave the building and doing something like well, and i don't i don't know uh, i don't know why she would be like so helpful like obviously they're like friends but like but this to, is the prodigy of your fucking company that is making your production company a ton of fucking money mm-hmm. you're probably not just going to go help <laughs> her out and say oh yeah let's uh let me get you sniped to another company well, well granted uh, Christina is just a producer for the publisher. Mm. So the publisher isn't Eagle Jump. It's like, you know, just like how Activision publishes yeah. Blizzard stuff. Yeah. Um, I have a feeling it's like maybe another, it could be another game company within their publishing Maybe she brand. manages that account too or yeah. something like that. Yeah. <clears throat> but who knows? Yeah, who knows? We'll find out next time yeah. on New Game. Exclamation, exclamation. Yeah, d- I gotta get um, the double exclamation in there. <laughs> so let's go on to um, the next show, Classroom of the Elite. I El- guess this Elliot. would be kind of happy hour time now. Yeah. Um, woo! <laughs> um, Except so we're not drinking. Water. Except we're not drinking. We're drinking water. water. Water, woo. Water, H2O, yeah. yeah. H2O is good for you. Bobby <laughs> Buffet. Um, but so this episode, there was like a lot going on. I felt like like mm. just a lot of shit happened. Just like shit is hitting the fan and all that with Class D. Um, and then the ending was kind of 
interesting. They keep giving us these like silhouette people. We had it last episode with where the mystery figure was looking in a uh, blue haired girl. I forget her name from class C's bag. And then now we have class C lit girl stealing the key card and, and then being up, a, being a secret ninja, being somehow. a secret ninja. And so is fucking, uh, God, what's her name? I can't remember. Susan A. Susan A. Yeah. yeah she's a secret ninja. she's got a fever and she's like, Oh, I'm just going to put you off balance and then blast you in the ribs <laughs> and then get beat with my 102 degree fever and just thrown in the mud <laughs> and just so i mean i don't know i don't know what do you what do you think's going to go on who do you think is there the uh, mystery figure drew i mean it's probably iona koji like he's going to just straight show up and be like oh <laughs> looks like you two are fighting let me step in here and get our key card back or something so, something dumb. but she was like here's the thing you asked for yeah and so, so we we got a lot of imaging of uh him in his previous whatever in some crazy laboratory of savant children um with bars and so like we don't actually know like what his motives are he's been threatened by the teacher and saying you have to help people um and then we've seen that kind of imagery and then so he we grabbed don't, her boobs yeah i mean we we don't really know what's gonna happen with him because he's so like mysterious and, uh, and weird um, so so you guys think that the one who planned all of like that may asked her to do all of that was Ayana Koji? I mean, that's that's what it's pointing to for me. Um, that's what I kind of thinking, because like I said, we don't know his motives. We assume that all of Class C is off the island. Um, but with that said, we don't know if one of them stayed or not and is just sneaking well, there's in a and, couple people and subplotting. <laughs> yeah, there's one in class B who's mm-hmm. hanging out with them. And then again, class A is kind of doing their own crazy like Lord of the Flies thing <laughs> in a cave. With sticks and <laughs> bows like and you, arrows you and enter, a tarp. You enter here. Fuck and you, you die. We'll kill you. Um, I think it entirely could be Ayana Koji. Um, I won't say for sure if it's one or the other, but they like because they had that flash image in Susan A's mind before she got thrown mm. in the mud and knocked out. And she was like, yeah. And then she passes out Not and it's like flash. And they showed like Ayana Koji or whatever. But so mm. I think it could be. Um, but she is part of class C and there's like a class C person in D and B. So it's like this weird like we're going to plant spies and other classes Find everybody's key card person and yeah. then just make our points and to just get a bunch of points or whatever but who knows so that's interesting because like i actually kind of think that the person that could have been behind you know that whole situation um and probably like plotting this like whole mishap shit wasn't i on a koji and i kind of think it's um uh what's her name uh Oh, short haired uh, bitch. Yeah. Purple eyed girl. Um, the, the one that's always like trying to get Ayana Koji's yeah. dick. Um, and what's her name? Soccer? Oh, Kikyo. I don't know. The yeah. blonde one? The brown haired girl. Oh, the, yeah. The, the one who hair. like goes crazy mode. Yeah. Yeah. I actually think be. she's the one because they kind of, I don't know if like they're maybe just doing this to like throw you off but like throughout the episode she does things that kind of are a little bit odd because it's like she walks up and starts talking about like oh like don't you think it's kind of weird that um uh Horikita and Ayana Koji are kind of close and like talking about that to like one of the dudes and then he ends up doing like walking up and like putting mud in mm, Susan A's yeah. hair. She flips him. <laughs> and and like, you know, that forces um, you know, her to go take take a bath. Mm-hmm. And that's like mm-hmm. an opportunity for the key card to get stolen. Yeah. And then another part is like there's the whole like the whole manual thing getting burned. And then um there uh, who is it? Oh yeah, she's the one that runs up and says, "Hey, have you seen fucking I forgot her name Ibuki, right? Mm-hmm. Like, have you seen Ibuki? She's missing, like throughout the commotion, as to like show like, oh, like she's the one that did yeah. this. Um, so I kind of see her as suspicious, and like she does have some sort of motive against um Susane to possibly, I don't know, get some sort of." deal out of it but i don't know what that would be 
maybe she also knows like a little bit more about Iona Kuji's past and is trying to like flush that out too. Um, you know, who knows? But like, like you said, we were saying though, it, ma- it makes, it makes a lot of sense too, that mm-hmm. that would kind of be the case. Um, cause we don't really know what her motives are, why she acts like a total like <clears throat> idiot. And then is like, I hate being alone. Stand next to me. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I think it could definitely go a couple ways. So yeah, that's kind of yeah. cool. I like that show or this show. Cause they do stuff like that. They kind of, give us stuff to think about it's yeah. not just cut and dry yeah this is obviously and then where there's it's gonna go. blonde idiot who does backflips and swims back to the boat like <laughs> if it's dude, him oh my god dude i want to know more about this dude there has to be more to him they they can't just have this guy who's like ha 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 i'm dripping with manliness let me go cr- climb up an anchor back to the boat and then laugh at the moon like what the fuck is going yeah. on yeah. there has to be more to this guy either that or he is just comic relief um but I, I I definitely this episode was intriguing. Um, I think it's you know throwing some cool stuff into the story. This is another one I hope gets another season. Me too. It's it's always really interesting, and they kind of you know you can kind of sometimes expect what's going to happen, but the way that you get there is a little bit different. So mm-hmm. kind of like kind of like. That. And then there's blonde haired guy. He just can't expect anything. <laughs> Even the main character can't calculate his movements. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave. I don't do, want to be here. I can somehow just do backflips and super athletic. <laughs> I can swing through <laughs> trees like a monkey. Hold on, let me swim back to this boat. <laughs> right? Jesus. Dude, that was easily like a mile swim. Yeah. And he's just like... <laughs> Not even out of breath. Just no, like hanging he, off the tree. I'm like, sure that was more than a mile. Beautiful. <laughs> and he just did like... The he did it in like beautiful. an evening. Like a short evening <laughs> jog. Like, let me just swim back to this fucking boat. God. Fucking uh, what, that what guy. God, dude. He's he's drooping with manliness, <laughs> just everywhere he goes. <laughs> nice. Um, but yeah, the uh, other thing the um that we might get something is the uh the um fuck the class leader guy. Mm-hmm. He starts like loot- losing his shit when stuff's going. He starts looting his shit. Yeah. I didn't do anything Never wrong. done anything wrong. Why is this happening to me? I yeah. thought he was gonna start murdering people. He had like <laughs> murder eyes. But I think we're going to have some sort of breakdown with him in the future. Maybe. Well, it's it's, it's kind of good to see some of these characters in Class D break down because there's a reason why they're in Class D. They're mm-hmm. all defective in some ways. So that's kind of more coming to light um, with some of the characters we thought were more normal, mm-hmm. um, such as him. Um, so it was good to kind of see their deconstruction, which is, uh, you know, like we said, good to see. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's better than, uh, what's his name? The basketball dude. Yeah. Who's just an idiot. Who's just an idiot. And, and the they're like, he hangs out with are just dumb. Hey, we're fixing you, um, by making you not violent. All right, yeah. cool. That was easy. <laughs> dude, the, although the antics that came from them trying to spy on the girls was still probably like one of the funniest like parts of the show. Mission impossible. <laughs> yeah, <shit>. Right. <laughs> they're doing sign language by the flags. He's got fucking flags up in the window, <laughs> like fucking signaling to people. Dumb. That was the best. Yeah. But, um, all in all a good episode. We have that finale yeah. next week too. Um, so that'll be interesting to see where they go with it and how they end. And I really hope they get a second season. I hope it ends in a way where it's obvious that they'll get a second season. So that I can, you know, take solace in the fact that I'll get to watch it again. But no one ever does that. Who knows? <laughs> um, you never know. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll go to the finale that finale. we do have. We'll have a finale of a finale. And uh, so our last show that we're going to talk about this week is a Sakura Questo. And it is the last episode of the series. I don't think it's getting another season. No, they it, pretty much... Close yeah, they, they ended it. And uh, so, you know, I mean, we find out at the end that Yoshino is really just us. We're, we are the outsider coming to this town reading a book in Sandalson's <laughs> brain. As Drew said, it's all in his head while he's in a coma. <laughs> he actually got hit by a car at the beginning of the show. And then he just dreamed all this. Yeah. And he's actually just in the hospital <laughs> dying slowly yeah. talking about Sakura Quest. <laughs> Um, but I thought, I thought it was a good wrap up to the show. Um, you know, especially with like the random antics of the mayor from the other town. Um, (laughs) stupid. what was it? Rolando? He was like, what'd you say? Uh, and why is it that every English speaker in the show is just a space cadet? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) They're just, (laughs) everyone. Wow. Beautiful sunset. Oh my God. He's just freaking out about everything. What he wants, he wants to motion. 
what was the washoi? Washoi. Yeah, he's like, I want to washoi. Okay, uh, can he wash away, please? <laughs> this is the best. But um, he somehow magically teleports from a bear-infested jungle or forest to like being back at the fucking festival. T- festival. Uh, yeah. yeah. Like what the fuck? <laughs> like, oh, we found him. He's on Twitter. He's washoi. <laughs> like, it's like what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, that was the. They were all talking through Twitter. And they just started using like hashtags and like Twitter mm-hmm. fucking acronyms and shit. Yeah. It was just, uh, it was, it was odd. It was, it was definitely an odd episode. It was goofy for sure. Like goofy in a good way. I enjoyed it. Um, Except we had to listen to that fucking song again. Oh yeah. the You hate that song. I, dude. I, I, ugh, it's so what's, what's wrong with it, man? It's like, it's like what we talked about, you know, this voice actress got paid to sing that one song. <laughs> she sang it once and then like all the rest of her lines are like three or four words long, but they recorded this, this song one time. And they're like, all right, you can go home now. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, the, and then the uh, for for her four lines, they just use somebody else. Yeah, they just change your voice yeah. a little, and then yeah. it's like the oh yeah, we said that about new game too. The uh, random programmers, good job making it. And yeah. it's like, yeah, I'm sure that they just had some other actor just <laughs> change their voice. Okay, good. Now go back to being Nanechi. <laughs> um, but back to Soccer Quest. Um, I'm trying to think of really. There wasn't really any big happenings. It kind of like went. Yoshino becomes a mercenary for little towns. Oh yeah, that's kind of what we get out yeah. of that. Like I'm gonna go revive all these towns now. <laughs> I'm just gonna right. be the queen at cool. a bunch of towns uh, for this agency, this work yeah. agency that I called up again. I mean, not a bad idea. She's <laughs> kind of can say like, "Hey, this is what happened to Monoyama. Mm-hmm. Um, we made it better." Now I can go and make your town better, maybe. <laughs> yeah, she's kind of uh, got a niche market for herself. Yeah, she's got to got to find new ministers, though. You know, mm-hmm. it's gonna be hard to beat. Just find them at each town. Right. Uh, she's just all right. You, you know things. <laughs> help me. And they're yeah. like, okay, I'll help you. You have pink hair and you're cute. Let's do this. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's kind of what we're left with. We we of course had the typical or expected train exit. With the old man running with the sign and all the people, <laughs> the the Literally twenty people the that were town. Yeah, <laughs> on the side of the road saying bye, but um, I'm trying to. I we, that's kind of all there was to the. What do you think well, of Rolando? There, there was also um the very end. Like we we have a feeling that Yoshino is not going to stay in Monoyama, and she ends up. So the call. Remember a few episodes ago, there was the call she had with her agency. Mm-hmm. And they kind of shoehorn that in at the very end of the episode where she's now promoting another. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, she's becoming this mercenary or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> like she's in an island or something yeah. is what yeah. it seems like. She's island, island down island. or something. Um, so now she's going to be promoting another island or I mean another small town to, I guess, get more tourism. So that's she, now her job. She's going to post on Twitter and the... Uh, the ministers and be like, damn, I should have gone with you. You're on a fucking island. You're an <laughs> island. <laughs> like island life, bro, for yeah. the next year. Yeah. It's, it's sick. <laughs> They're going to be jelly hashtag. Yeah. But, oh, we also got some, what each of them is going to do. Like, I mean, Shiori's going to stay, obviously. Mm-hmm. I don't, they didn't really say, she's probably just going to keep doing what she's yeah. doing. She's, she's going to make sure the town stays like how it is and keeps and growing. Ririko's traveling the world. She's going to go to Spain or something. Yeah, with her, with her, a Spanish speaking friend, mm-hmm. even though she doesn't speak Spanish as far as we know whatsoever. Um, <laughs> been doing that Rosetta Stone. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, she's been too busy practicing her song. How could she, <laughs> how, she how could she get Rosetta Stone? And then um, Sinai, Maki is going to stay yeah. doing s- plays, more mm, plays, yeah. um, not getting paid for them. So somehow making a <laughs> living doing that. Um, and then Sanai is opening a store. She's opening like her own shop so like she's gonna be doing um it shit kind of how kind of i was thinking like kind of how she helped the old people yeah good at technologies like tutor people show them how to like do web design yeah you know stuff like that yeah she'll earn like nothing no money doing that in that town probably has no rent she's just staying at that house for free (laughs) yeah (laughs) she doesn't need money she'll just go to the grocery store that's down the street from her and be like hey i need groceries all right here you go and then she'll get hitched to the bookstore guy yeah (laughs) no she's gonna go with um sculptor dude Angst, oh yeah, angry yeah, sculptor yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's like he's gonna though. he's gonna support her with that craft that is you know dying. He's like, yeah. I sold a statue today. Yeah. Got you know about like 
Twenty thousand yen. <laughs> nice. That's the only one you sold all year. Yeah. Good Sweet. Job. Let's make it work. <laughs> I'll, I'll beg for groceries at the grocery store again. I'll sell my body to <laughs> old man Jenkins, the one who likes her ass her or whatever. Butt, yeah. yeah. Oh, the guy that that makes the fucking cucumber or grows the cucumbers or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah that guy with the crazy glasses yeah. and he tries to spy on Maki taking it or. Uh, Yoshino, Yoshino taking, taking a bath, bath yeah, yeah, and then Maki beats him up and hog ties him. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, so everyone's kind of going their own way. You can yeah. go, yeah. I kind of like the <clears throat> the version that we were giving it as the episode was airing, like what we thought was going to happen. You know, where um, uh, Erica traps uh, Maki's oh, yeah. brother. <laughs> And forces and forces him to move to Tokyo with her. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot about that part of the episode. <laughs> She's like Taiko drumming, and he's like, "Oh, what's your goal?" And I'm not telling. Not to, telling. It's to the trap secret. him. It's to get gonna pregnant. Trap you. And yeah. then be like, "We have to go to Tokyo. There's no hospitals here. <laughs> How else will I have a baby? We're going to Tokyo." <laughs> it's like what? We have to. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy little girl. And she's got alternative motives. Yeah, she's yeah. going to trap him. <laughs> God. Um, anything else? I'm trying to remember if we had any other commentary besides. I mean, we found out at the end that the book <laughs> that we keep seeing is just the storybook that Sandelson is writing. But like we said, it's yeah. actually just a coma dream. It's all in his mind. Oh, yeah. It was actually just all in his mind. He was, was in a coma this whole time. Yeah, because yeah, he got hit by a car at the beginning. Didn't he? There was like he almost got hit by a car at the beginning or something, right? Or maybe he's writing it from jail. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, he's writing it from the jail. <laughs> yeah, this is just a, a fucking jail. He's like lonely in jail because there's no one in the jail. It's like super high on Jankum or something. <laughs> just like uh, writing this, uh, this, this children's storybook. <laughs> God, so, so before we go down too dark of a path, um, yeah, I think we, we could stop there. That's the finale of Soccer Quest. Um, I liked it overall. The show. Mm. Did you guys enjoy it? For me, it was hit or miss. Um, certain weeks were good. Certain weeks were like, ugh, this is painful. Um, I don't like a lot of the characters that you know we talked about it before, but uh, I think out of ten. Um, the rating for me, I'll probably give it like a six. It was, it was enjoyable. Um, the story sort of became dull for me. I don't think this needed to be a 24 episode series. Cause like I said, it just became dull at some points. Um, but yeah, I think solid six for me. Um, nothing that stands out, you know, too well for me. It's not like super, super memorable. It's just kind of, this is what happened. These are the characters in it. And you know, you kind of go along your way, but Overall, not too bad. What do you think, Rolando? <clears throat> yeah, um, I I liked it overall. Um, it's not the best show that PA Works has put out. Um, it's definitely not glass slip level. <laughs> yeah, that's it's definitely better. That's than the that. saving grace of it. <laughs> um, it's <clears throat> there. There were moments that I thought it really shine. And then there are other moments where I'm just like, why is this even happening? Mm. Like what's wrong with the pacing? The animation is poor. There's all this stuff that's going on and that kind of detracts from it. And I, I thought the, like the background, um, music was good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, it really, you know, kind of gave it that, you know, countryside, you know, random hometown atmosphere. Yeah. But at the same time, it's not, <clears throat> it wasn't amazing. So it's probably it, the, the closest show I can compare this to would be Hanasaku Iroha. And it's definitely not at that level, like at all. Um, so I want to give it a seven, but you know, it's just above average. Like that's basically it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's an average, an average show. <clears throat> like there's some feel good moments. Um, there's some likable characters that sometimes <laughs> do frustrating or dumb things. Um, but yeah, like you said, overall, just meh. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't say don't watch it. It's just kind of yeah. I mean, like you right can watch it. I'm not gonna watch it again. No, no, no. no. 
Um, I I tend to agree with most of everything you said. I like a lot of the characters, but like the story did get very monotonous. Um, it just kind of droned on with the same old, same yeah. old. Um, it's kind of like how gamers kept doing the same old like misunderstandings, but the difference is it like they still had really funny moments and they did switch it up. This was 24 episodes of pretty much the same thing. It's like one or two episodes per character. They have a little bit of development. Then you move on to the next one. Mm-hmm. Then you move on to the next one. Then the overarching big thing <laughs> happens. And then another couple of episodes of development. It's just, it's the, it, yeah. it's just the same thing over and over again. And, and back to like my comparison to Hanasaku Iroha is like in, in that show you get, you feel and you see Ohana's, character development from episode one to the end of it. Whereas in Soccer Quest, Yoshino has character development, but there are points where I'm just like, wait, when did you, your character become this developed? So it's like things happen and I'm like trying to piece together like what caused her to, you know, become this way. Mm -hmm. So like there's the difference in, in that writing. Um, that I kind of felt disappointed in because it felt lacking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I, I agree. Um, I'm probably going to give it like, I, w- I was thinking like six and a half, seven. Um, <clears throat> pro- I'm probably going to go with six and a half. I think that's about as good as I can give it. Um, it just, I don't know. Like, like Drew said, I wouldn't recommend it. If someone were like, Oh, what's a really good anime I can watch. I'm not going to say go watch this, oh, but no, if someone's like, not. Hey, <laughs> is soccer quest like good? Should I watch it? I'll be like, you can watch it. It's mm-hmm. not bad. Like yeah. just it, Kind of drones on a little. If you don't like it after four episodes, it's just more of the same sort of deal. Mm-hmm. So. Well, that's the thing. It's yeah. like the first few episodes were actually really good. Mm-hmm. And then it fell off drama- dramatically mm-hmm. after that. Um, so, you know, all in all, okay. Okay show. Man. I did like the kind of like nostalgic vibe, I guess, you could have throughout the show sometimes. Where you're like, oh, this little small town is kind of cool. Like they did a good job of that. Um, like with the music, like you were saying, and just kind of, I guess the, the background characters I thought were pretty good, but yeah, the story kind of just fell short for it being too entertaining. If I wanted to watch like a cool feel good thing about small towns, I could just probably go find like YouTube videos walking through small towns. I'd be like, sweet, this is awesome. I'm in a small town. Um, and not have to watch 24 episodes of the same thing over and over. But, uh, so that's it for soccer quest. Um, uh, do you guys have anything? Well, soccer quest is kind of nostalgic for us. Cause it was the, the one show that kind of dragged between both seasons, um, uh, since true. we started doing the anime. So kind of sad to see it go for that reason. Um, but other than that, yeah. you know, it's, it's gone and we got to move on boys. Yeah, we do, but it opens up a slot for something new. So Shoku any Gitti. suggestions? Shoku Gitti, you know, so <laughs> um, I'm going to say, uh, Magus bride. Yeah. Probably. I really want to watch that one. Um, the ancient Magus's bride. Oh, <laughs> it looks really good. The three episodes they have out right now are really good. It reminds me a lot. Like I say this every time I talk about it, it reminds me a lot of like the Miyazaki kind of films or like spirited away where a lot is said without words, just from like the imagery mm-hmm. and that of what's going on. So it's definitely got a cool vibe to it. Um, but we definitely should talk about what shows we want to do yeah. probably next week with the finales. Um, mm-hmm. Mm. yeah let's dedicate so, our last time to that yeah mm-hmm. let's do that um and then did you guys have anything else you want to talk you said you may have had an idea but you forgot i don't I you don't, don't remember <laughs> all right yeah and I, I i can't think of it we talked about video games last time oh you weren't here though are you excited for any specific video games like uh i know you guys talked about destiny mm-hmm. uh, that's the big one i'm looking forward to um and then we're going to blizzcon uh, yeah. which is going to be pretty cool but that's not until uh, november mm-hmm. um Trying to think, we're kind of like in a lull. Uh, Mario Odyssey is coming soon. Um, that'll be cool. Uh, yeah. Other than that, nothing. Yeah. Jumping, so you jumping uh, out at me. Basically, just said the same shit we did. Yep. You're excited hey, cool. for the same stuff we are. Hey, cool. <laughs> Odyssey, Destiny, and yeah, there we go. <laughs> the only other game we talked about was like God of War. Mm-hmm. And only Mark is the he, Mark. Mark was, was I'm really so excited. excited. Beard Kratos is that when he's looking forward yeah. to? Yeah, with the kid. I mean, I think it looks really good. <laughs> it does yeah, look yeah. really good. I'll probably end up. I haven't it. played God of War since like the second one. Yeah, I played the <laughs> first one and then part of the second. I was like, all right. Um, yeah. The only problem Over. I have is like, it seems like it's gonna be you know like a like a big open world game like Horizon Zero Dawn Breath mm-hmm. of the Wild type thing, mm-hmm. and I don't know if I'm ready to 
get back into that. <laughs> no, I put. I still haven't played Breath, Breath of the Wild, Wild because I I can't dedicate that much time to running around an open world that big. <laughs> I mean, if you want, I have or you have the guide. Yeah. Just. Yeah. You doesn't. You don't even need a guide for that game. Though. No, but you could like see exactly how to get yeah. like yeah. certain things and. I'll play it eventually. Like the shrines or I'm whatever. Just, I'm, I think I've said this before. But I'm just scared I won't like it, so I don't want to. I mean, the game is really hard at the beginning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then there's a really hard dungeon that yeah. Alec will know what <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah. That boss is like frustrating. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But other than that, it's like yes. yeah. it's pretty it's pretty like it gets easier mm-hmm. as you Well, I'm more get interested stronger. in the story, like difficulty is difficulty, like I'm not Well, you have to do that. a lot of exploring exactly. to get the story. Yeah, That's yeah, the exactly. thing. Yeah. Like I I went to 100% the story. And uh, it took a while yeah. because mm-hmm. I kept getting distracted. And that's, and that's what I want to do, yeah. but yeah, can't dedicate to that. And then I know you and I, Rolando, need to play Nier still. Oh, yeah. Um, so I have to beat that. My sister wants to play it. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have to play Prey I have to beat still. it. Yeah. But uh, you should definitely play Breath of the Wild, dude. It's a good it's story. Good. Uh, it's a it's, good story. It's not, it's not Maybe in the best months. Zelda game <laughs> like a lot of people are touting it to be. Yeah. No. Like people are like acting. It's like the, the best thing since Ocarina of Time. But... I, I'm going to have to disagree. I think it's a really good game, mm-hmm. but I don't think it's the best Zelda game. I mean, game. it's going to be hard to beat A Link to the Past for me. I mean, A Link to the Past is just an excellent It just game. has a different vibe from all other Zelda games. Because it's yeah. open world, you don't get the same kind of like... Well, I know it's inspired feeling. from like Zelda 1, and that's kind of yeah. how Zelda 1 was as well. Um, I don't know. I'll play it eventually. It's a fun game. Um, it's definitely like... A top five Zelda game. <clears throat> oh, yeah. yeah. And they just released a uh, DLC where they have like the master mode. And oh, so everything yeah. is harder. Sweet Basically, harder. all the enemies are upgraded one. So it's the like, you know, on so the it's like you start with the red, the red. You start uh, with the blue ones. The blue one? Um, no, like it originally. Oh, yeah. And then and now, now they're, they're blue. blue. Yeah. Mm. And so I was reading an article and a guy was like. It's already hard enough. He in the was beginning. saying <laughs> like, uh, I, I first, the, when I first went out there, I just like I had my weapons. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to fight this guy. I went through all my weapons and then died. <laughs> and then I decided, okay, I guess I'm going to be doing a lot of running now. And so he just like is flying through and he said it took him like 20 hours just to get off the great plateau. And he's like, just because he was like constantly running and hiding and yeah. uh, making tons of food. And he said it, <laughs> a, a don't jump into it though, right away. Cause you get a lot of like mechanics from playing or the first yeah. like through it in the beginning, like learning how to make fires without Flint and what kind of recipes are good. So you don't waste your food and all that sort of stuff. But, um, yeah, it, it definitely looks interesting. I want to, once all the DLC comes out, I want to play it and then do the master mode probably. Yeah, and I'll I probably try master mode once I'm in the mood to, yeah, to have get something into a really big hard. open world that it's really difficult. Because it's yeah. like that game was already really hard at the start. Yeah. But then it got easy. <clears throat> yeah, it so did get a, really easy. By the end. So let's replay uh, Persona 5 too. Uh, yeah, I haven't. It's going to be a fucking chore. Do <laughs> Just don't do it. <laughs> no, I'm going to definitely replay Persona yeah, 5. On, Persona, on yeah, Persona, Persona always has good replay value and it's usually worth it to play through New Game Plus. So, um, But yeah, so I think that's pretty much all we got today um, for episode 25 of Anime on Draft. Oh, what is this? Uh, fifth or how many episodes was our first season? Was it? Uh, it was kind of like it was like we were talking about se- like spring season. and summer season stuff in mm, the middle, like right. around like 12, 13. 13. Okay, so we're, we're you know we're getting mm. along there. Yeah, we're, we're chugging along. Yeah. Um, but as always, you can check us out. You can listen to us at uh, on iTunes, SoundCloud. Those are always out earlier than YouTube. So if you want to get us right away, then uh, those are those are the best options. Um, we're obviously also on YouTube. Um, you can find all of these on our WordPress at uh, animeondraft.wordpress.com. You can see all of our previous episodes on all three of those platforms. There's a little button that says get us on iTunes. Um, yeah. Check out our Twitter for updates. Uh, one day we'll update our Instagram again maybe someday. Um, the Facebook updates automatically from the Twitter. So check out that little Twitter button on Facebook. <laughs> um, besides that, um, yeah, that's all our social media. So yeah. we hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, this is episode 25 again. So 
later on, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.